Today News Update. From the Barbados Today Newsroom, this is your evening news update. So glad you could join us. We start with news of a spike in the number of people turning to the Salvation Army for help. Today, the Army's Divisional Business Manager, Major Sherman Evelyn, says more people have been seeking food, clothing, and even shelter to better cope with the rising cost of living. Middle of June? We That's 2021. 20, 2021. We had 13,000. For this year, it is 14,903 persons that we have fed. Um, the persons receive clothing. Um, it's over 500 persons receive clothing, and that, that's clothing, furnishings, um, books, to, books for like um, school and so, and furnishings, baby clothes, um, young mothers having babies, they want pampers, formula, such. Um, also, our pantry program last year, around this time, we had up, for, up from January to June, Middle of June, we had over 2,500. This year, we have 3,116 persons receiving food hampers. And that number is growing. Yes. In other news this Tuesday, Minister in the Ministry of Finance, Ryan Strawn, has defended government's borrowing of $256.6 million for the Scotland District Road Rehabilitation Project. He insists that the loan has been secured at attractive terms amid rising interest rates globally. He was speaking on Tuesday as he presented a resolution seeking Parliament's approval for government to borrow the money from the Export-Import Bank of China. The 20-year loan has an annual interest rate of 2%. Interest rates, sir, for the first time in a long time are rising globally. And I will come to the terms and conditions of, of the loan just to give some perspective. But equally, sir, because, or especially because interest rates are starting to rise globally, sir, and the consensus generally, sir, is that rates will continue to rise in the short to medium term as both the authorities in North America as well as Europe seek to try to respond to the latest set of shocks through the use of monetary policy, interest rates, in order to help curb inflation. Minister Strawn stressed government must finance critical works in a sustainable way. The extent to which we are doing this now, sir, allows us some very critical space, sir, to be able to execute these works relatively cheaply, um, sir, with respect to the quantum of, of, of works that are expected to be done relatively cheaply given what is happening and available globally um, from a financing um, perspective in order to, to keep our debt trajectory, sir, in line and that the debt service with respect to, to, to that, that we are capable of being able to, to deliver, sir, in the medium to long term. A major milestone for relations between Barbados and Africa. On Monday, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Senator the Most Honorable Dr. Jerome Walcott, officially opened the CARICOM diplomatic mission in Nairobi, Kenya, marking the first of its kind for Barbados on the continent. Speaking at the CARICOM new offices in the South Tower of the Two Rivers office complex, Walcott said it is a testament of Barbados's outreach to the motherland and cradle of civilization. He stressed that Barbados intends to fully deepen its ties with Africa. The Chief Executive Officer of the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. says the island must position itself as a year-long destination to attract low-season travelers who are likely to become a key market. He said it's necessary for Barbados to make this big move, with global statistics showing that 78% of travelers are choosing less crowded destinations. We're partnering with an organization called Low Season Travel, and I actually believe that low season travel will be the next luxury. People don't want to spend time with a lot of people and pay higher prices, and I think that's the shift. So the goal is really to make sure that we position Barbados as an all-year tourism destination to drive consumer demand, which results in increased airlift. So, and I think that's a big goal, but I think it is possible. So the solution is create public-private partnership frameworks to engage stakeholders and create inclusive initiatives 
to reduce marketing spend and increase return on investment. Regional and international news coming up after this short break. Cure Oxygen is way more than just water. We infuse pristine water with over 1 billion tiny oxygen bubbles using our state-of-the-art process. The benefits of additional oxygen are huge. From strengthening your immune system to increasing energy levels, stamina, and sports performance. And that's not all. It also improves skin health, helps you sleep better, and reduces stress. Join the movement of people experiencing the benefits of Cure Oxygen. It's not hype, it's science. To regional news, in Jamaica, there's widespread anger as a 23-month-old baby is among four children brutally murdered along with their mother in Clarendon. More on this report from Television Jamaica. Massacre sending shockwaves through the community of New Road in Clarendon Tuesday morning, attracting dozens of people and police and military personnel. Just meters away from the yellow tapes is the house where the bodies of four children and their mother were found with their throats slashed. The police say the bodies also had stab wounds. It's not clear what time the tragedy took place. As for the victims, the children have been identified as 15-year-old Kimani Smith, 10-year-old Shemina Smith, 5-year-old Kafana Smith, and the youngest, Tishana Henry, was just 23 months old. Head of the Clarendon Police, Senior Superintendent Glenford Miller, is irate. They could be any one of our family members, any one of our children. One year old baby. Come on, man. It's believed that the incident stems from a domestic dispute. SSP Miller says residents now have to play their part and help the police. The French president is hosting opposition leaders for two days of talks after his ruling coalition lost its absolute parliamentary majority in Sunday's vote. With the door of the Idizi Palace wide open to representatives from across the political spectrum, Emmanuel Macron hopes to negotiate his way out of a political standstill. We remain part of the opposition in a determined way, determined but responsible. We will never block the institutions, but making a pact, a coalition or anything as such is out of the question. A compromise that's hard to come by. Campaigners and voters are all divided on the issue, some believing the Conservatives need to work with Macron's party. Personally, I'm not siding with the opposition. We're working on the issue. I think the Republicans will vote for what will benefit the French people. We don't agree for now. We have our own ideas. Today, the most important thing is that we need a government so we can go forward. We need reforms. Party politics are maybe a thing of the past. A new phase in politics, which the leader of the Socialist Party says the president needs to get to grips with. If, for example, the president is ready to increase the minimum wage to 1,500 euros, he will have a majority for this. If he wants to revalue retirement pensions and put them on the same level as the minimum wage, we will support it. If he wants to block the prices of essential products, we will also back it. The leader of France's centrist party, François Bayrou, says he believes many politicians are keeping quiet for now, but will soon express their support for a governing majority. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbudastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. Sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD 99.3.